Inactivity doesn't guarantee that everything remains status quo. Rust, corrosion, the effects of weather continue. Your flying skills during this idle time can become rusty too. Your reaction time slowed. Your judgment shaken. Be smart. Do some checking on your airplane and on yourself before you start up again. plane has been setting idle for several months due to economic problems possibly or sickness where a pilot hasn't had the opportunity to go fly it's always a good idea to start off with a good wash job and a good wax job this affords the pilot the opportunity to look at his airplane look for damage result of vandalism possibly loose rivets possibly hangar rash in this area where airplanes are moved around his airplane, it gives him an opportunity to see what has happened to his airplane in the months that it's been idle. Remembering that the wax airplane will afford the pilot a better performance. It's always advisable to check all of the openings on the airplane. The pitot tube, the static port, and also all the drain holes. This is especially important because in the wintertime, many times, water collects in there, and the Freezing causes damage to the control surface itself. In addition to that, birds have a way of getting in openings. We want to look in there to find out if there's any evidence of a bird building a nest or any rodent as far as that's concerned. And if we have any doubt about it, have a mechanic remove the inspection plate and take a good close look at it. We do have a case on record where a venomous snake crawled inside of a tail wheel type airplane and the pilot didn't discover that he was on board until he was in flight, and it presented quite a problem. Make sure you check the underside of the aircraft, too. Inspect the tire, take a good look at the shock strut, check the brake lines for leaks, also the fairings, drain the gas tanks for any possible water. Also, take a look at the underside of the fuselage for any structural damage and leaks. It's very important to check the windshield for cracks damaged by weather, such as hail or sandstorm, blowing sand. Also, the cowl for damage by vandals. This opening here should be clear. The propeller itself should be checked for damage. The spinner it should be checked. Possible cracks here around the screws inside the engine cowling. We should make sure there are no bird's nests or foreign objects there. Check the alternator belt and also check the landing light and the various openings on the cowl. Also check the condition of the strut and the tire for proper inflation. Check the controls for freedom of movement. Make sure there is no binding. And above all, check for proper rigging. Also, the compass for fluid. Make sure it's full of fluid. Might want to make a radio check. The lights, are they working properly? The instruments for discoloration. Above all, make sure you have the proper documents on board. Have the cowling removed to check the engine compartment. Look for foreign objects. Also, check for loose connections. The spark plug leads the engine mounts for cracks, the hoses and the wires for deterioration and cracking, excessive rust, leaks. Take a good look at the exhaust system and the heating system so that you won't get carbon monoxide in the cabin. If the engine's dirty, have it washed down. But in any case, if you have any question or doubt about the condition of the engine, Check with your mechanic and have him take a good look at it before you fly. From the time an aircraft is turned off of the production line, it starts to deteriorate. This deterioration process is called attrition. It's an ongoing process that happens with any piece of machinery or equipment. When your aircraft has been in storage or has been idle for any period of time, it would be very wise for you to have a 
A&E mechanic look the aircraft over for you, pre-flight it, check the sumps, check and drain the oil, change the filter, service your accumulators, your regulators, your batteries, any portions of the equipment on the aircraft that are prone to failure, as they all are. This is just to ensure you of a good, safe trip the next time you're out flying. This is a typical example of an aircraft engine that's been left for a period of time in storage. The cylinder walls have rusted, causing pits and damage internally. The oil drains away from the cylinder walls, allowing the moisture to enter with the air and corrode the cylinders. One of the methods of preventive maintenance on this, which does help, is to remove the upper spark plugs, rotate the engine through as we spray oil internally into the cylinder, trying to coat the walls. This is probably the best measure we find for preventive maintenance if an aircraft is going to be stored for any period of time. The importance of topping off your fuel tanks I don't think can be overemphasized here. Here's a couple fuel cells that we have which have been severely dry rotted due to the fuel tanks being left empty. The rubber deteriorates. This is caused by the tank being dry. The hot sun baking on top of the wings elevates the temperatures internally in the wings to tremendous degrees. This uh, neoprene rubber is susceptible to that. Therefore, it is important that we keep fuel in these fuel tanks. If the aircraft is going to remain idle for any period of time, I would suggest that you fill the fuel tanks, keep them topped off. This keeps the moisture out of the tanks and also lubricates the cells and keeps them pliable. If you haven't flown for an appreciable length of time, it is imperative that you go out and get a check ride. At least go through minimum control speeds, stalls, and takeoff and landings. You're operating in an unforgiving environment, quite unlike driving a car where you can be off for a while and get back into the swing of things without any difficulty. How long has it been since you've flown, Hector? Oh, Lois, I haven't flown for quite a while now. Uh, we have had a few recent new rules and regulations come into effect, and you have probably reviewed them. So let's see how you fly. Okay. And before takeoff, parking brake set. Fuel selectors. Right main. Train tap set. Controls check. Left. Around, right around. Free and full travel. Temperature and pressures in the green. Make sure switch. Props forward. RPM 2100. I need a check. Left. Hold. Right. Instruments in the green. Flaps are up and indicating up. Cabin doors and windows secure. Okay. Check is complete. Seven air five five Tango Alpha is ready. Nine left. Requesting left and wind departure, please. Five Tango Alpha. Five time Alpha requesting left on wind departure, please. Left down with departure approved. Five time Alpha. Six six Romeo taxi to position and hold.
noise we're going to do now. Slow flight. Reduce the power so you hear the horn. Just faintly beeping. Put the power back. Maintain the heading and altitude. Slow down to minimum controllable airspeed. After your hood work, make enough takeoffs and landings until you and your instructor are confident you are back in top form. If you are one of the many pilots who sit out the cold winter months, be especially conscious of the weather when it warms up again. Springtime is a time of transition and change. This applies to flying weather as well as to other things that begin to take place. As the sun begins to climb higher up in the sky during the spring months, we notice that the jet stream begins to shift northward, the storm track begins to shift northward, the temperature inversions that we have been observing during the uh, winter months begin to dissipate. It becomes quite evident that the air becomes more unstable and that the winds become a lot windier. The effect of this temperature contrast 
is to make more squall lines than are ordinarily seen during the winter and summer months. The squall lines and fronts that may accompany them move much more rapidly at that time of the year than at other times of the year. So pilots should be alert for rapidly developing cumulonimbus type clouds that would herald the development of thunderstorm activity. And of course, this means turbulent weather and everything that goes with it. Pilots should be aware of rapidly changing conditions during the springtime. And it is suggested that you keep in constant touch with the services that are providing weather information, such as the FAA flight service stations and the National Weather Service. The weather is good. You're flying again. What a feeling. You made that extra effort, thoroughly checked out your aircraft, and you're satisfied that it's now as ready as can be. You took the time to resharpen your pilot skills by taking a check ride. You now fly with reawakened confidence. The forecast looks good. The skies are clear. Have a good and safe flight.